Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about Marion. I think in all the elites that I've built so far in the game, I don't think I've been more surprised by a champion in this game yet than her. I was expecting so little out of her. She was so far on the back burner for me. And I brought her up and I put some gear on her and I've, I've tried a few things with her and she has blown me away with how effective she is. She is part of our Ash progression. She is she is in large part the reason we were able to get an Ash 10 auto clear. She's now part of the team that can auto Void Tower normal for me from floor one through 100. She does. They, she's on the team that can do 99 and 100 on auto. Uh, they are just the, the team is really good. And then she's such a big part of the team. She's such a big reason these things can happen. She's got some very interesting mechanics for an elite. She's one of the more unique elites, I think. And I just never really appreciated her kit in the way that I probably should have <laughs> now that I've seen her in action. So uh, she's she's definitely a cool champ and can help you if you're if you're stuck in certain parts of Ash or or some of these stages. She kind of enables you to to drop the dedicated healer slot and bring more damage dealers because she has mechanics that enables the damage dealers to stay in the fight longer. So really cool champ. Let's jump over and talk about what she's got going on, and then we'll take a look at her gear and then see her in action in some places in the game. She's bees all the way across the board, so that means you can kind of go whatever direction you want to go with her. I've decided to go tankier and a little bit faster, but I'll say even without having focused her damage stats, she still does pretty good damage. So I'm, I'm guessing that if I was to swap her around and go with attack stats, she's probably a pretty decent damage dealer as well. I get more out of her right now as I'm using her as a more of a tank. Not necessarily a tank, but tankier so that she's guaranteed to stay in the fight and do all the things that she needs to do. Because if she dies, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be in trouble. So the, the 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 big thing, the big reason we want her to stay alive is her trait. When she's ascended, she's got 25% team-wide lifesteal. This is what allows you to not bring the Connor or the Radira or whoever it is and maybe slide in another damage de dealer or at the very least another support that that like like joseph for example is a good one for me he's part of the ash team and the void tower team i mentioned and i think the reason i can do that is because i have her so i don't have to put in another healer right and she has other contributions as well so this is really really nice the the 25 percent team wide life steal and she's got a mechanic that makes this even better and we'll talk about that soon her A1, she's got a defense down. Nothing too complicated here. You know I'm always a fan of an A1 defense down. This is great for your dungeon bosses. This is pretty much great for anything. So having an A1 defense down, we do want her to go earlier in the rotation. We definitely want her to go before our damage dealers so that she can put this up before our damage dealers do their thing, right? That's why I decided to go with a little bit of speed on her as well. She's got this A2, or the special rather. Protects an ally for two turns, during which any damage or healing received by the protected ally is delayed until the end of their turn. Damage taken is reduced to 50% of the total, while healing and lifesteal are boosted to 150. So what she does is she puts a buff on one of your team members. She will target whoever's in the most danger, in my experience. Whoever's got the lowest HP is the one she'll put this on. What it does is it locks their HP in place for the next two turns and any damage that they take is cut in half by 50. Any heals that are cast or any lifesteal that they get from attacking is boosted to 150%. I have not one single time in using her, seen her use this skill and have that ally come out negative. I've always seen their health go back up. The, the damage mitigation with the improvement to the the heals that they receive and then the lifesteal they're doing is has always netted positive HP for them coming out of it, especially when it's someone like Zachary whose trait might get procced, or he might drop an AoE, or even has good single target burst damage. Uh, they, they always come out with more HP than, than they had when she put this. I, I have not one time seen them go negative. So this is a really cool skill. There's been times where I've watched her use this on auto when someone like Zachary is really low, you know, less than 10% HP, and this will shoot them back up over 50% when, when it goes away, because again, he procs his trait or does an AoE or something like that. So this is a really cool skill. She uses it well on auto, and if you were manualing, it's it's even more effective, right? Because you can time when you use it and uh, line it up with an AOE or with a healing spell or with someone else's heal. It's uh, it's pretty nice. In conjunction with this too, her ultimate works really well. It's on a three-turn cooldown, 
150% damage to an enemy and heals the team member with the lowest health for 100% of the damage dealt. It's usually going to be whoever she puts this this um, this on. And so now it's that's getting boosted by 150%. Again, all the damage coming in is getting cut. So you've got a good single target healer he here with a good with a mechanic that kind of boosts the healing that usually this target is going to receive. You've got an A1 defense down. You've got team-wide lifesteal. She's doing so many different things. She's bringing so many different things to a fight. And when you read it all, it, it might it's another one of those cases where it's like, meh. <laughs> but, then, but then when you see her in action, she's actually really, really good. So very cool kit, very unique elite. Uh, one of the more interesting kits, I think. Uh, let's talk about how I've geared her and some other options as far as gear goes. I've got her on a revival set. And again, I focused HP and speed. And then I, you do want to get some focus on her. And we'll talk about some different ways to do that if you wanted to go this route. What I was looking for is tank stats and my sub stats. So HP percentage, defense percentage, a little bit of speed where you can find it, a little bit of focus where you can find it, and she'll be okay. Uh, earlier, you could go with Terra sets, Vanguard sets. Raider set is also a good option, but you, I, I, I would recommend getting something on that's going to either boost her HP or, in our case, help her heal a little bit extra just to compensate for the fact that we're probably not bringing another healer, right? If I'm bringing her, I'm trying to build a team where I don't have to bring Radira or Connor or someone like that. That doesn't mean I'll never do it. That's just what I'm trying to do right now. As far as bottom stats here, I want speed on the boots. HP on the ring and HP on the amulet. Depending on what your gear situation is like, you can justify going focus on the amulet and then really hard focusing HP everywhere else. Uh, you could you could sneak a raptor set in on her to get some more focus that way. Um, but that's basically it. Speed HP across the bottom or speed HP focus. If you wanted to try the damage route again, I, I would still I would still probably want to go speed on the boots unless you had some really good speed in the subs you just want her going first so if you can achieve that with attack percentage on the boots fine uh, ideally you'd want crit damage on the ring and then probably attack percentage on the amulet but again you could also go focus and then you'd be looking for damage stats in your sub stats right crit rate crit damage attack percentage and then still focus and a little bit of speed so i think it's a little bit harder to build her as a damage dealer but certainly seems reasonable because again i don't have any with, I, I, I had no intention in enabling her to do damage, and she still smacks pretty hard. So it will be interesting at some point to test her out and see what kind of damage she can drop. Um, so let's jump over now. We'll take a look at her in some places, uh, maybe like Ash, maybe a quick look at her in Void Tower, some, just to kind of let you see what she's bringing to a fight, let you see it in action, and, uh, and, then, and then we'll be right back. So enjoy.
But there you have it. You see her in action in a couple of places in the game. Uh, Ash, you see that moment where Zachary's health was pretty low. She put her A2 on him. He filled his health all the way back up when it went away. And then you see what it looks like when you're in arena with her, using her manually, how she protected Zachary again. Again, Zachary's pretty squishy, so he's usually a, a good candidate for this. But you see her effectiveness in the fight, right? She's uh, she's really, really strong. I'm, I'm very impressed with her. I'm surprised at how much of a staple she's becoming in the account and a lot of the teams that I'm building. So hopefully this uh, persuades you to give her a look at least and answers any questions you might have about building her. Uh, we did, I skipped on the Void Tower thing. I've got a whole video going up soon on the Void Tower thing. Uh, so that, that'll be on the channel soon if you wanna see that. Uh, but you get, I think you get the idea. So that's it, we're gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, I hope it was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you later.